All right, we are back. Hey, we've just finished talking about quantum numbers. We've defined the four quantum numbers. Uh, in fact, you know, I think after this discussion here, uh, we're going to go on. I'm going to help you with some of your homework, but, but let's move on a little bit. We're going to apply the idea of quantum numbers now to how electrons enter um, an atom, how they actually buzz around the atom, and where we would possibly find them. Um, we're going to use something called the hotel analogy. I'm not sure if you've heard of this before. It's an analogy that was proposed by uh, Henry Eyring, one of the uh, greatest chemists of this century. He happens to be a native of Utah. In fact, the chemistry building at the University of Utah is the HEB, which is the Henry Eyring building. It's named after him. And he also has a son uh, who goes by the same name, Henry B. Eyring, who many of you may have heard of. At any rate, a very famous uh, individual from the state of Utah. So we're going to use his analogy to explain how electrons are placed in an atom. In this analogy, in our hotel, each floor is an energy level. And that energy level, of course, is expressed by the n quantum number, as we've described. Now, each floor has a certain number of hallways. And those hallways are the, represent the sublevel, or the L quantum number. And along each hallway, there are, there are a certain number of rooms, which is the m quantum number, or the orbitals. And each room has two beds, one for each electron, the s quantum number, positive and negative, one half. Here's a nice little schematic diagram of our hotel. You'll notice it's a strange diagram here. We have the first floor, the second floor, and you notice on the second floor, there are two hallways, the s and the p. There's the third floor of our hotel, 3S, 3P, and 3D. So there are three hallways. And on the fourth floor, you guessed it, there are four hallways, S, P, D, and F. And then we have the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Now, as we move up here, the electron is increasing in energy. Now, a couple of things you have to remember about electrons. Number one is electrons are not a whole lot different than you and me. They are lazy. They like to expend minimal energy in doing anything, and that includes staying at a hotel. Those electrons want to expend the least amount of energy going to their rooms and hanging out at their rooms and at the hotel. Number two sort of goes along with the first part. Electrons prefer to be by themselves. Remember, if electrons pair up, they repel each other. They're hard to stick together in the same space because they would rather spread apart. So it takes a little bit of energy on their part to be together. So number one, they are lazy. Number two, they prefer to be by themselves. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about several different atoms here. We're going to start with the easiest of all. We're going to go with the hydrogen atom. And let's not worry about this column here on our notes. We're going to talk about its electron configuration. And that's sort of a a note for the hotel concierge uh, to know a little bit about this hydrogen atom who's coming to visit and its electrons. Now we do need to know how many electrons each of these atoms have. And of course, hydrogen has an atomic number of one. It has one proton and one electron. So I'm just going to write down here that it has one electron to worry about. Now let's take a look at our hotel. We have several rooms to choose from. Where do you think that hydrogen is going to want to stay? I think it's going to pop up here on the fifth floor into the F sublevel, or do you think maybe it's going to want to hang out on the first floor? You guessed it, it's going to want to be on the first floor. It's easy to get to, right? There are no stairs to climb. Oh, by the way, this hotel has no elevators, so it has to climb stairs in order to get to its room. So it's going to want to go on the first floor. I'm going to represent that one electron for hydrogen with one arrow pointing up. We're going to say it has a positive one-half spin. Let's start with positive one-half spins, just because well, we're positive kind of people, aren't we? So we'll start with positives. So the electron configuration for the hydrogen atom would be uh, the first floor, the S hallway, and there's one electron there. So we'd say its electron configuration is 1S1. Now my dot picture includes the symbol for the element, which of course is hydrogen and it's valence electrons. Now, hydrogen only has one electron, but if it had more than one electron, we'd only worry about those in the highest energy level. 
So we would draw one dot. I like to draw it to the right of hydrogen, and that would be its dot picture. Hydrogen with one dot, representing its one valence electron. Okay? Now, the next element on our periodic table is, of course, helium, atomic number two. So helium has two electrons to worry about. Well, don't you think that the first electron would go here in the first floor S hallway, just like it did for hydrogen? The question is, where does that second electron go? It has a choice. It could double up with this electron already there. Now, wouldn't that cost a little bit of energy? Of course it would. It would have to pair up. That takes energy for those negative particles to be together. Its other option is to hop up to the second floor or the second energy level and get a room all by itself. Well, it turns out that it takes less energy for that electron to drop down to the first floor and pair up. So we're going to stick it in this room right here with the other electron. So helium has two electrons on the first floor down the S hallway. So we would say its electron configuration is 1s2, representing the first floor S hallway, and there are two electrons in there. Now the dot picture, of course, would include the symbol for the element, and I include the valence electrons. Now I like to draw a little orbital diagram here. For the 1s, there are two electrons there, and there's one orbital. Do you see how they are paired up? So when I draw the dot picture, I draw a pair of electrons on the right-hand side. I don't separate them on different sides of the atom. I pair them up, because in their orbital, they are paired up. So its electron configuration for helium is 1s2, and that is its dot picture. All right, let's take a look at the next element. The next element is the element lithium. Its atomic number is 3. So it has three electrons. Well, don't we know where the first two electrons for lithium are going to go? They're going to go on the first floor S hallway. Where is the third electron going to go? Well, is it going to go up to the fourth floor, the seventh floor? Of course not. It takes too much energy to go that far away. So it's going to have to climb some stairs and get into the second floor S hallway. So the electron configuration for lithium is 1s2, 2s1. 1s2, 2s1. Meaning that on the first floor, S sublevel, there are two electrons. And the second floor, S sublevel, there's one. That accounts for all three of its electrons. Now, what do you think its dot picture is? Well, there's the symbol for lithium. Do you think its dot picture will have three dots in it? If you thought that, you are wrong. You weren't listening. The only electrons in the dot picture are valence electrons. Those are those found in the highest energy level. The highest energy level for lithium is the second energy level, and there's only one electron there, so it only has one dot. Okay, and that's its dot picture. All right, the next element is beryllium, and you'll notice beryllium's atomic number is four, so it has four electrons. Well, we know where the first three are going to go. Where's the fourth electron going to go? It has a choice. It could stay on the second floor and go up to the 2p sublevel, but to go from the 2s to the 2p, it has to expend a little bit of energy. So that's a choice. You can get a room all by itself on the 2p, or it could pair up with this guy that's already there on the 2s. Turns out that it takes a little bit less energy to pair up. So of course, that's where the fourth electron is going to go. So the electron for the or the electron configuration for the four electrons in lithium is 1s2. 2s2. 1s2. 2s2. How many dots, I may have said lithium, sorry, how many dots will be in beryllium's dot picture? So we have beryllium, BE. If you said four dots, you're wrong. We are interested in the highest energy level, which is the second energy level, and there are two electrons. The 2s sublevel has one orbital, and those electrons are paired up. So I draw them as a pair on the beryllium atom. That's its dot picture. Okay, the next element is boron. 
Boron is atomic number 5. It has 5 electrons. Notice on the periodic table we jump from beryllium over here to boron. We go from this area that's 2 wide and we begin this area that's 6 atoms wide. So, we know where the first four electrons are going to go. The 1s and the 2s. Two electrons in each. The next will be my 2p. Now each of these have the same energy. We're going to put one electron there. That's where the fifth will go. So its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Symbol for boron is b. How many dots will be in its dot picture? If you said 5, you haven't been listening. If you said 1, you haven't been listening. The dots in the dot picture are in the highest energy level, which is the second energy level for boron. That second energy level has an S sublevel with a pair of electrons in it, and it has a partially filled P sublevel with one electron. So the dot picture will have a pair and one electron by itself. And that's the dot picture for boron. Okay, carbon has six electrons, atomic number six. Do you notice now it's the second element into this section of the periodic table? So, if you take a look, we have the first five electrons for carbon. The sixth one can either pair up with its buddy here, or it can get a room by itself. What takes less energy? Well, let's see, this room has the same energy as this room, but it will, can be by itself. Remember, it takes energy to pair up. So it's going to be by its lonesome here. So the configuration for carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, and there are two electrons there, 2. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. How many dots will be in carbon's dot picture? If you said 4, you are correct. The highest energy level is the second energy level, and there are two electrons in that 2p, and two electrons in the 2s. Question, are they paired up or are they by themselves? Well, in the 2s, there's a pair, those guys right there, and in the 2p, there are two, one, two. So the dot picture for carbon would have a pair right there, and then these two by themselves. Now, some textbooks, and there's a good reason for it, show these four electrons as being by themselves. That's okay. Let's not worry about it for right now. Today, we're going to do it as it's written here, because those electrons, two of them are paired, and two are by themselves. The next atom is nitrogen. It has seven electrons. And so you can see the seventh one is going to go here. It can be unpaired still. So we have 1s2. 2s2, 2p3 for nitrogen. 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. It has five valence electrons. So for nitrogen, we will expect to see five dots. In the 2s, there's a pair. Boom. And in the 2p, remember, there are three by themselves. So when I draw the dot picture, I will draw a pair representing those, and three by themselves representing those. So we'd say nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. Next up is oxygen. It has eight electrons. And take a look and see what's going to happen here. We know where the first seven are going to go. That eighth is going to have to pair up here, isn't it? So we're going to put it right there. So oxygen's configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Take a look. Oxygen is 1, 2, 3, 4 into this section of the periodic table, and it's two rows down. It will have six dots in its dot picture. The 2s has a pair, doesn't it? And the 2p has four electrons. One, two, three, four. So its dot picture will have a total of one, two pairs. There's one pair and two pairs, and these two are by 
themselves. Okay, let's stop right there. This is getting to be about 15, 16 minutes long. And you might want to think about what the next ones will be like. Maybe consider what their electron configurations are and what their dot pictures will be like. We will do them in just a minute. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.